And now let us turn to the scriptures at Luke chapter 24. Now we hear the Lord speaking to these two men who were on their way to Emmaus. Seventeenth verse. And he said to them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto them, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Look at the paradox of these words being addressed to the central figure of all those happenings. Yes, there was an upheaval in Jerusalem and all these events that had taken place had taken place around the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was being asked, Are you a stranger in Jerusalem? You know, my dear friends, the Lord Jesus Christ was going to communicate to them the fact that he was alive, and he was going to walk with them and talk with them so that they would be left in no illusion or delusion. You know, they cannot say it was just a momentary flight of our imagination because the Lord Jesus walked with them. He was walking with them. Unfortunately, we have fallen out of this habit of walking, which means our communication is very limited. We meet just a very small circle of people but you know, when you walk along, I notice when I would catch the bus in London or in England, as I would wait at the bus stop, there would always be people, you know, we it's common to talk about the weather. Somehow people start a conversation. And in a very short time, the sorrows that are pressing in their hearts come out. I have found that whenever I walked, and also when I went into certain little shops, the shopkeeper would always talk. You know, but we are in such a hurry, we go into those places where our shopping has hardly anything to do with any salesperson except the, at the checkout counter. I hope you at least smile at the checkout counter. You know, you can be very friendly at the checkout counter. And I always find a kind word helps so much. And they never forget you. You see? And here the Lord Jesus joined these two men, so despondent, 
sad in their countenance and their communications were doleful communications. You know, how many of our communications tend to be doleful, without hope? Negative communications. You know, on one of my journeys, in the airport or something on a very cold day when I remarked to somebody well this is Michigan you know and the response was yes this is Michigan and we have the best weather I said how now he said we don't have hurricanes we don't have forest fires and we don't have Californian earthquakes. So he said, this is the best weather. <laughs> See how positive, positive people can be. <laughs> well, you know, we can be so negative in our communication. But the Lord Jesus teaches us how to be, to completely change in our manner of talking. Well, before that change came about, you know, they needed to recognize a person. Are you only a stranger? As long as Jesus is a stranger, you're going to have only doleful communications, negative communications. But when Jesus comes alive and you see him, you have something full of hope and joy to communicate even in the saddest circumstances. You know, folks, when people taste the Lord Jesus after coming out of heathenism, after coming out of superstition and idolatry, there is a thrill about it. You know, when it was reported to me, I knew this family very well. It was a family in great sorrow because the mother had been bedridden for almost 12 years, I believe, and an enormous amount of money had been spent. She was just skin and bones. And hearing of one of our meetings, you know, not held in a beautiful place, just in a mango garden, uh, you know, a crowd had gathered. And my father's lodgings were not a fanciful hotel of some sort. It was just a tiny tent. And this idolatrous woman requested her son, please carry me and put me there. I hear some children of God, men of God, are coming to this village. And... They carried her in an ox cart, you know, in her couch or whatever, and put her before my dad's tent. After she was prayed for, I suppose it was a couple of days 
after she was prayed for. While my dad was returning after addressing the crowd, he found this woman walking towards him and saying, What a great God you have. What a great God you have. You know, it was a sensation in the whole place because that was a leading family in the village. And the husband was a notorious man. So when he got home, he was out of town, but when he got home, the son was asked, Where is your mother? What's happened to your mother? Mother is dead, he said. And he was smiling. What do you mean, your mother is dead and you're smiling? Oh, you will find mother if you go to that particular garden. And this man went there. And to his great amazement, he saw his wife seated on a chair. And as soon as she saw her husband approaching, she rose and offered the chair to him. This was a double wonder. But when she said, The Lord Jesus healed me, he was so averse to it. He said, why, why do you say the Lord Jesus healed you? Immediately he began to vomit blood. And you know who prayed for him? His wife prayed for him. And he survived that very atheistic person. He repented of his sins and they were both baptized. And I recall as a boy when I heard their testimonies, I was thrilled. What a great God you have. Heathen lips must declare that. You know, unbelief, one of the products of our consumer age and our modern way of living is lack of true communication with God. You know, a kind of godliness which denies the power thereof. You know, a kind of head religion. Oh, if some calamity should come, I had better be on the right side of the fence, kind of. Is that religion? Is that, does that belong to the cross? We love the Lord under all circumstances, favorable, unfavorable. We are not a bunch of weathercocks just turning with the weather. You know, people are full of that kind of instability today. Anything goes wrong, oh, so many things can go wrong, of course. You know, when I draw up my schedule, I draw it up so fast, so, so close together, that sometimes I overlap before one meeting, series of meetings close, I schedule another hoping to even communicate 
or rather commute up and down, up and down, so as to be able to take care of two campaigns. Because people will wait. People are pack the place at five five thirty or five in the morning. You see? Now that kind of hunger is no longer there in our present society. Why? The works of God have become so distant. If we are walking with God, we would have such a reality of His presence. Strangers, the most unlikely people, I tell you, there's something wrong with the old rodents that inhabit our pews. Something seriously wrong. They don't have that freshness of love which surges into the hearts of heathen people when they meet the Lord Jesus. What a Savior! What a Savior who dispels my fears. So as they walked along and talked, they were speaking of their total disappointment and frustration. 21st verse. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. It's all finished. They condemned him to death, and he was crucified. Just fancy that they were telling the Lord Jesus Christ who had experienced the crucifixion. You know, they crucified him. And beside all this, this is the third day, so it's all over. It's all finished. My dear friends, faith is one of those commodities where you keep learning and learning and learning as well as unlearning. You unlearn your fears. You unlearn your unbelief. You know, unbelief is something very close to our hearts. We know this in our heads. We know the Lord is risen. We know that all power is given to him in heaven and in earth. Now, when you turned on your lights, when you went home or your heating or your lights, did you suspect that the lights will not come on? Or when you turned your ignition this morning in spite of the cold, did you f say, oh, my car is never going to start? How did you get here? When you put your key into the ignition, you assumed that the car is going to start. What faith you had in Michigan weather and your beautiful car. Didn't you? You exercise so much faith in technology. Hello, my dear friends, it was very hard. You, some of you, did you ever crank an engine? Did you? Not one person here. Oh, there are two, uh, three. Okay. You never cranked an engine. Alive. 
You see, sometimes you had to crank and crank and crank. You didn't have your <laughs> automatic ignition like turning a uh, key. But we we used to get the stars cranked and started. You see, we exercise so much dependence and faith in technology. We take it for granted. But when it comes to matters of the living Savior, who is The Lord Jesus Christ said, where two or three of you are met together, there am I. You know, our eyes may not see him, but the reality of the Lord Jesus. Now, if this should dawn upon this whole nation. So Jesus rose from the dead. And he said, Lo, I am with you always. Now, as the Lord Jesus began to speak to these people, 25th verse, please, then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. O oh, fools and slow of heart. You know, when the Lord Jesus Christ calls anybody a fool, you remember the man who had gathered so much from his bounteous harvest, so that he said, Soul, eat, drink, and be merry, for there is much laid up for you. And Jesus said, the God said, Thou fool! You know, we seem to be pretty smart, aren't we? In... Uh, the way we take care of our insurances. We, we make sure we work hard for our degrees. You know, I had to work very hard because I was a f almost a full-time preacher at the time when... I had to write my exams, and this was rather difficult because there was so much study, you know. But our words are indicative of our faith. Now the Lord Jesus Christ saw that these communications of these men were devoid of faith. You know, my dear friends, the wonderful thing about my mother, who died just over a year ago, the wonderful thing about my mother was, if you, you never saw her complain, never. You never saw her mama. And when you, one is 100 years old or 103 years old, there are certain human or physical weaknesses. You can talk about them. On the contrary, she would only talk words that would lift you in faith. And it was a very special experience.
to go and speak a few words to her and you were lifted in faith you know today many situations there are in our families where you have to lift people in faith it's very unfortunate people have become like dead weights they can only sink they can't swim they can't rise above the tide but when the lord jesus christ said to them oh fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have written slow of heart well i don't know whether you are fast in the matters of faith but i fault myself very much in this regard i say hey what's the good of my faith how little faith i seem to have look at the faith of moses suppose one of us was given an assignment comparable to moses's you see if we had to lead a million people moses i estimate was leading close to 3 million but suppose one of us had to lead a million people would we have the faith to lift them and they were all grumblers by nature so all that you could hear from morning till night from them was grumbling 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 about something my dear friends i don't know whether you have to live with a grumbler but i tell you i can't stand a grumbler for 5 minutes some people have cultivated continual grumbling capacity capacity to grumble over almost everything and let me tell you it is uh, it is something demoralizing it weakens you you can't dwell amongst grumblers here these men were not exactly grumbling but they were expressing their deep frustration you know one of my friends who is a preacher how many times i had to pray for him when he was in pain with stones i believe in the bladder or whatever when pain in the couch and in many a crisis and i heard him for the first time saying we are called unto frustration what <laughs> I never heard the likes of that we are called unto frustration what do you mean i can't say that at all not at all as a as a matter of fact if i set my heart if god gives me a project to do and if i set my heart on doing it i visualize the whole thing and i see it coming to pass it seems like a distant impossible dream to begin with but lo and behold god concretizes the whole thing called on to frustration ha huh? i never heard such words in my life 
But that is the kind of atmosphere with which some people surround themselves. But Jesus rebuked them. So this resurrection morning, I do not know whether all of us require a fresh rebuke, including myself, of course. Over what? Over the smallness of our faith in the face of a resurrected Lord. How small is our doesn't do any justice, doesn't do any honor to our living Savior. So he said, Oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. 31st verse. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him. See, after he had blessed the meat and the bread, and break it and gave it to them, they said, there's something familiar about all these things that are taking place. What? Where were they? Were they in some kind of fantasy world? Why didn't they s discern the nail prints in his hands? But they could discern something which was very familiar, his breaking of the bread and blessing it, and their eyes were opened. Their eyes were opened. Oh, that our eyes would be opened to see the real potential and impact of the resurrection. Are we using it? Are we living it? Are we employing this power that worketh in us? Is this power being manifest to those outside? Friends, this is a time to demonstrate Jesus with all the unbelief around us. We have many opportunities to demonstrate him. Let me tell you, in our homes and in our surroundings, places of work, there are many opportunities to demonstrate the resurrection power. And you have got to show it in your life. Let us pray. Let us tell God, Lord, I want faith. My faith does no honor to you. No justice to you. I want faith. Gracious Father, let our hearts burn within us like the hearts of those two disciples, despondent, despondent men, turned into men 
with an undying flame in their hearts. Did not our hearts burn within us whilst he spoke? Oh, make our hearts to burn, dear Lord. Don't let this become an old, old story to us. Let our hearts burn with love with obedience. Come to us, Lord Jesus, and walk with us. Teach us to walk with you. Whatever rebuke we need, administer that rebuke to our hearts. We beseech you. Hear our prayer. And come to every frustrated, fearful, disappointed person attempting to preach today in various parts of the globe. Please come to them. Hear our prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen.